A thread from Brian Cates. The numbers are in after states like Florida and Texas opened up weeks ago while progressives shrieked loudly about huge coming spikes of infections and deaths in those red states. The numbers not only stayed low, but they fell. But here's what progressives are doing. Daniel Ulfelder says, beginning next Saturday, I will have a team handing out free body bags throughout the state of Florida to beachgoers. This is what happens when an ideologue climbs into a narrative and locks himself into it from the inside and then throws away the key. And you wonder why these people lose to Trump? There is no key. They locked themselves and they threw it away. Daniel Ulfelder says, each body bag costs $10. We ordered a few hundred tonight. Please consider chipping in $10 to cover the cost of a body bag. For every $10 contribution, we will be able to order one more to hand out. You can contribute here. Secure.actblue.com slash donate. There is no way out. They will spend the next five months relentlessly gaslighting about mass infections and deaths from the virus in Florida and other open states while the numbers continue to drop as they simultaneously fight to keep blue states locked down. Daniel Ulfelder tweets, I need 500 patriots to chip in $10 to purchase 5,000 body bags. I understand during a pandemic that some might not be able to contribute, and I want you to know that retweets are free and equally appreciated. Here is the link for those that can chip in. Secure.actblue.com slash donate. Because if you had any doubts, this open versus stay locked down debate has nothing to do with public safety. It is all about the election in November. Is it not becoming increasingly clear to you? And while progressives are waiting and carrying on about huge spikes in infections and deaths in red open states that aren't happening, we're learning why the infection deaths were so much higher in blue states like New York, New Jersey, and Michigan. Democrat governors deliberately sent infected people into the nursing homes by executive orders. Long after it was settled silence, science, this virus was far more lethal to the elderly, especially if they had other health issues. These governors were believing the doomsday models that wrongly predicted their state's hospitals were about to be deluged and overwhelmed. And so the governors sending the CCP virus people to nursing homes would free up desperately needed hospital beds. Here's why you can't reach these people, and all you can do is ensure they are exiled at last to the political wilderness, if not for all time, at least until the massive damage they've done to this country is healed. It's a cult that rewrites history. Everything that happened on this virus since January, they've already created their alternative history about it and programmed themselves to believe it. I'm not exaggerating. We're dealing with a cult right out of Orwell's 1984. They brainwash themselves first before they come after the rest of us. But understand this, don't miss it. The big point, these people are now so self-deluded, they are literally a real and present danger to the rest of us. If this pandemic did not graphically show you why you cannot continue to place brainwashed cultists in charge of your city, your state, or your country by electing them to power over you, then nothing will. Understand, Democrats have reached a point where their being voted out of power is a necessity for America's survival and security. That party is now inescapably in the grip of people like the giggling dits eating her expensive gourmet ice cream in front of her two $24,000 fridges as she celebrates her coalition literally holding a vital relief bill hostage during a national emergency to add a wish list to it. You cannot reason with Nancy Pelosi and Adam Schiff or a Gerald Nadler. 
They are too far gone into their delusions. All you can do is take the gavel back from Pelosi and the chairmanship of their committees from Schiff and Nadler. You take power from them. Here's where the posers will show up and the concern trolls to lament how powerless we all are, how we've already lost. Our country is doomed. Democrats rigged the game. I'm wasting everyone's time, even talking about fighting these people and throwing them out of power. Wrong. Take your stupid act elsewhere. I can't stand posers. They're useless. If we're all doomed already, Mr. Poser, explain how Trump got elected. How did that miracle happen? Trump beat Hillary's ass like a drum, fair and square, in the 2016 election. How'd that happen if Democrats have rigged the system and the war is already over and we lost it? Trump beat them four years ago when they not only had every advantage, they were cheating. This time, Trump has all the advantages, and he's going against a babbling, disoriented opponent with mental issues. But it doesn't matter, the posers loudly assure me. The Democrats will make sure they cheat enough to steal it this time. I'm assured by these concerned trolls that Democrats are going to ride a massive wave of vote fraud this November as they hold the House, flip the Senate, and put babbling dementia Joe in the White House. A popular mass movement to toss tyrannical Dems out of the office won't matter. What these posers and concerned trolls are trying to tell you is you voting doesn't matter. May as well stay home because your vote won't matter. They'll steal it anyway. They always do. You can't stop it. Don't I look so cool posing here in front of you? Well, no, you don't look cool. You look like a total moron standing there, arms folded across your chest, your head tilted at an angle, your sunglasses, which you wear even indoors, making you look even more ridiculous. Trump set records in the primaries, running unopposed. And now, Democrats running these blue states like petty tyrants will continue stoking the growing white-hot rage building within their own voters for the next five months. You know who's going to take full advantage of that growing white-hot anger in the blue states? Donald Trump. Did you know, Mr. Poser, what Donald Trump's special superpower is? It's convincing angry, disenfranchised Democrat voters into voting for him. He's very smart how he uses this superpower of his. It's how he won in 2016. And you're trying to tell me that he's lost his mojo and it's impossible for him to do it again. So let me tell you this, Mr. Poser, before I toss your ass out the door. I don't believe you. Take your worthless message of defeat, cynicism, and futility and get the fuck out. You are not wanted here among the fighters. When you fight, you fight to win. The Democratic Party must be shown no electoral mercy, none. Anything that would prevent a total and complete overwhelming red wave election must be discarded. So, when people try to tell me this massive building red wave, that's going to be even bigger by November as millions of former Democrats cross over, doesn't matter because it will be canceled out by an even bigger blue wave of vote fraud. It pisses me off. These people aren't thinking. That's how you know they're posers. Vote fraud allows you to steal a close election. We're talking two to three points at the most. Mike Garcia just won in California, even with mail-in voting, by 12 plus points. That's about nine points above even the most ambitious vote fraud methods Democrats use. Why didn't Democrats just wave their magic vote fraud wand and invent 13 points worth of fake ballots for the Democrat candidate? Well, sure, they would have. If vote fraud works the way the posers imagine it does, they picture some dem bigwig in a back room picking up a phone on election day and saying, yeah, the other guy, he he 6,000 votes ahead. I need you to deliver 7,000 votes to a guy. When a couple thousand ballots get harvested after election day, that's how they flipped a bunch of close races in California in 2018. Do you know why they can't do that this time? Because 
the Supreme Court established a precedent in Wisconsin. In April, a tub of ballots was found after Election Day was over. Of course, the Democrats wanted these ballots to be counted. The GOP sued. Guess what the outcome was? In a 5-4 to four decision, the Supreme Court ruled that ballots counted by the clerk as official election totals had to be in by the close of Election Day or postmarked on that day. If a ballot was not in by Election Day or postmarked that day, it could not be counted. Now, prepare yourself for a shock. Democrats never know how many fake votes they have to come up with to steal a close race until the first initial count is done after all the polls close and election day is over. This Supreme Court ruling changed everything. Democrats' favorite dirty trick of waiting until the election day was over, waiting for the initial count, and then manufacturing the required number of votes to flip a close contest was just taken away from them. The Supreme Court cannot allow California or Nevada to count ballots not cast on or postmarked by election day if they just said this can't be done in Wisconsin. That's what establishing precedent means. Democrats' vote fraud systems were created to steal close elections after the election is over and the votes have been counted. That was the point of the fraud machinery kicked into gear. They have a target number. They know how many they need. They won't have that information beforehand this time. They're going in blind. They have no idea how many fake votes they need. The gaps in the races will be bigger than ever before, but they have no idea how big. Chunks of their own base have either crossed over to Trump or won't show to save the Dems' asses on Election Day. So any vote fraud they attempt has to be done by or on that Election Day itself. And like I said, they have no idea how many they'll really need. As the five next months unfold and Trump holds his massive rallies and Sleepy Joe craters in half-filled gyms and turns into a pathetic afterthought sideshow, millions of former Democrats will be getting ready to send Pelosi and company a never-to-be-forgotten historic message. Concerned trolls don't understand Trump. They paint a picture of Trump being some kind of passive victim, a tool of fate. There's a huge threat out there. He's blind to. He has no agency to act and save himself. They enthusiastically explain this to you. Okay, let me enthusiastically explain something to you about Trump being some kind of passive victim of fate. What utter bullshit. Far from a passive victim with no agency to affect his own fate, Trump is the master of his destiny. You think you have a better grasp than Trump does on what happens to both him and his family if he loses this election and or the Dems flip the Senate and hold the House? Nobody has a better grasp of what it means if he loses this election than Donald J. Trump. This guy is a problem solver. He takes seemingly impossible tasks and finds a way. He's going to tirelessly work to get the 270 electoral votes he needs just like he did last time. Stop with the passive victim bullshit. This guy is nobody's passive victim. He's going to build voter enthusiasm to an astonishing level like this country has never before seen. Democrat vote fraud efforts will be smashed like matchsticks by a towering red wave. One more thing. How many of you knew this was going on? Deputy Postmaster General loudly whining about how vote by mail is under existential threat was just given the heave ho from postalnews.com. Reform at the post office has been underway for some time now. How many of you even knew about it? I'm willing to bet about 99% of my own followers don't even know about that April Supreme Court ruling taking away the Democrats' usual post-election day ballot harvesting and the precedent it set until I told them about it. There are people out there who do nothing all day but invent narratives they peddle to get people good and scared. They do it for eyeballs, clicks, and views for the money.
Some of them are even trying to help. They think terrifying people into action is the best way. Why aren't those people telling you about the post office reforms? Why aren't those people telling you about the Supreme Court cases? I know why. I know why they won't tell you. It would be bad for business. Trump's an optimist. He got elected in 2016 by talking about promises, hope, and love. That's what he's going to do again. And it'll work this time, too. You can quote me on that.